All right, friends, you might want to have a couple colors today. You may also want to have a straight edge. You can use a piece of paper or a notebook or your student ID, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's gonna help us just a little bit today. For this lesson, this is mid-segments and altitudes. Our learning target is I can use mid-segments and altitudes to find, that's right, missing values. That's what we always do of triangles. Okay. So we've been talking about triangles, mid-segments and altitudes are two types of lines that are inside triangles, which is why we're talking about them right now. So these are lines inside triangles, okay? So first we're gonna start with mid-segments. We're gonna show you a couple ways to talk about those, and then we're gonna talk about altitudes. All right, so mid-segments first. So there are two different things we wanna talk about. There is the actual mid-segment, and there is something that looks kind of like a mid-segment, but is not actually a mid-segment. What's cool about this is we can use either one, and I'm gonna show you right here how to tell the difference. So we're gonna learn two things, right? This type and this type, and then we're gonna use those things. All right, so when we have a triangle, all right, triangle, and there is a line parallel to one side, all right? So I see this line. Now these little arrows, that means parallel. So this little arrow and this little arrow tells us that these two lines are parallel. That's a new symbol you may or may not be aware of. This is a line parallel to the other side. That's all I know, okay, which is different than this one. If all I know is I have this line parallel to this line, it does a pretty cool thing. It separates the other two sides proportionally. So that means this side and this side have now been separated proportionally. You're like, oh, I don't know what that means. Okay, so remember proportional means two fractions that are the same, basically. So let's say that I said that this side was two and this side was four. You won't have to do this, I'm giving you numbers, don't worry. If I knew that this side had been cut into two parts where this was two and this was four, right? I know that the whole thing is six, but this line has cut this into two parts. So two over four, I know reduces to one half. So what has to be true 100% has to be true is whatever these two numbers are, they also are going to have to reduce to one half. So in this case, because no numbers were given to us, I'm going to choose the numbers. But you'll notice down here, the numbers are generally given to you. So you're not going to have to make up numbers. Don't worry. Okay. But we could have something like three and six. So three and six will also reduce to one half. All right. So what this line does is it cuts perfectly where the ratio from here to here and here to here are the same, or they are proportional, okay? All right, cool, that's one thing. All right, now, if this line becomes even more special, it can be over here, all right? So this is just general, it's parallel line, that's all I know about that line is it's parallel. This situation says if that parallel line connects the midpoints of two sides, then it does something cool. So here's my line, right? And this and this would then be the midpoint of those sides. Over here, I don't know that. Obviously, this is not the midpoint because that is four and that is two. And if this is the midpoint, those have to be the same correct? So if it does happen to fall in exactly the right spot where this and this are exactly the same, and this and this are exactly the same, it's perfectly positioned, if that's true, then the parallel line is half the length 
of the third side. That's written kind of weird. Um, but basically, this is half of this. Okay? So if this parallel line is perfectly positioned so that these are actually exactly the same instead of proportional, and these are the same instead of proportional, then we know one more cool thing that this is half of this. So let's say that I knew that this was 10. Well, now I know that this side has to be half of 10. So this line BD would have to be five. All right, super cool. So we have two different things. I'm gonna use my two different highlighters to kind of help me see which situation we're dealing with so I can organize my thoughts. But first, I'm going to organize this paper a little bit because I realized after I made it, it's kind of a lot. Not that there's a lot of math to do, there's just a lot of pictures. So I'm going to put some lines here to kind of help me organize my thoughts, okay? All right. If you want to get crazy, you can do it this way too. I don't know if you care that much, but you could. Okay, and then these two over here. All right, so let's start with this first one. The first thing you want to do is you want to observe, and I'm going to use my highlighters. I'm going to see, does it look like this one, or does it look like this one? So if I see here, what do I see? I see that five matches five, and so I'm over here. That's kind of cool, right? Those don't match, these do match. So five and five match, which means four and X must also match, which means that X is four. Not too shabby, huh? Okay, so let's look at the second one here. I notice my sides do not match. So these do not match. So I'm looking at this one over here. All right, which means these are not gonna match. So one thing I know is that X is not nine. So let's talk about how we're gonna actually figure this out. So probably the best way is we're gonna set up a proportion. And you guys have done lots of proportions, you might not remember. We're gonna do this one over this one. Oops, I just wrote it backwards from what I even said. All right, three over six. And we know, right, because up here they had to be equal. I know that it's going to have to be equal to 9 over x. Yes, that's a 9 and not a q. All right, so you're like, oh, I've totally seen this before. Some people call it a butterfly. Some people say, I don't know what, baseball and a bat, whatever. We're multiplying. So 6 times 9 is, what, 54? And then we divide by 3. So x equals, ding, 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 type it in, 18. Now, if you wanted to check your work, I'll go up here and I say 3 over 6 reduces to 1 half. 9 over 18, ooh, that also reduces to 1 half. Woo-woo, we did it right. Good job, us. Okay, so it's going to be important for you to recognize which situation you're dealing with. So I would encourage you to have some colors today. So something that I notice is I've got these tick marks and oh my goodness, those look just like those tick marks. Actually, both of these have that. So I'm going to go ahead and help myself out and tell myself that this is the pink situation we're dealing with here. Okay. And what did we learn about the pink situation? All right, the sides should be the same, but they didn't give me any sides. So I don't really need that piece of information. They're talking about the actual line. The line is called the mid-segment, okay? This line is the mid-segment. It is the segment at the mid-points. Clever, huh? Super cool. It's also halfway, right, up the triangle. So we learned that the mid-segment, right, is half of the third side. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't like using halves. So the other way we could talk about it is two times the mid-segment. I'm just going to write mid-seg, okay? Two times the mid-segment 
has to equal the third side. Eh, right. So 2 times 5 gives us 10. That makes sense. All right, so 2 times the mid-segment, 2 times mid-segment gives me third side. So if I plug my parts in here, I have 2 times x gives me 10. Oops, I probably should have picked other numbers up there. If you want to do some real math, you can divide by 2, and you know that x equals 5. Some of you could just look at that and be like, oh, half of 10 is 5. That's totally cool as well. Here, now I'm looking for the third side. They gave me the mid-segment. I'm looking for the third side. Okay. I still know that 2 times the mid-segment should give me the third side. So 2 times 7.5 should give me x. What is 2 times 7.5? That's right. 15. Okay, see it's not so bad. We're okay. All right, last two like this. What do I see? Oh, I see that these sides are the same, so I'm going to use my pink. I also see that they're wanting me to find the mid-segment, just like we did before. I know that 2 times the mid-segment is equal to the third side. So 2 times x equals 7. Whoops. Divide by 2. x equals 3.5. Okay. There's a typo right here. That's my bad. This should be a 3. Miss Wilson did a crazy thing. Okay. I notice that these are the same and these are the same. I already know the mid segment and they want me to find the other side. So 2 times 6 equals x, so x equals 12. All right, not too bad. Let's do one of these. We're not going to do both of them. I'll come back at the end of the video and do the second one if you want it. I'm going to do this one just because it looks a little bit scary, and it's not really. So I am going to have to use some space, though, um, to make sure that I get all my work in here. So what do I notice? I notice that these are not... Oops, I used the wrong color. Oh, that defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? I see that these are not the same. These are not the same. So I'm talking about this situation, kind of like this one. And I know this looks crazy, and you're like, oh my gosh, miss, I don't even know how to do this. Sure you do. I usually start on the left, and I also usually start top over bottom. So what I mean by that is I'm going to write x minus 2 over x minus 1. And then I'm going to move to this side. I'm going to do top over bottom. You're like, miss, I have no idea how to do that. Sure you do. Sure you do. Um, so we're going to cross multiply. Okay. So now I have 10 times x minus 2 and 18 times x minus 1. Oops, got to fit. All right. Guys, now it's just math, and we know how to do this math. Let me focus a little bit better. Focus, focus, focus. All right, that's as good as we're getting. All right, so we're going to distribute. So 10x minus 20 equals 18x minus 18. And now we just get to solve. So this is where some of you guys freak out because you have so many options. All right, it's not called combine like terms if I have to go across an equal sign. So don't do that. If I have to cross the equal sign, I'm actually moving. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides.
okay? Then I'm going to add 18. Yikes. So I get 8x equals negative 2. Nope. Oh my goodness, I made a mistake all the way in the beginning. That's a plus sign. So this should have been a plus. This should have been a plus. This should have been a plus. Please mark this interruption, but it is pink. Sorry about that. That was a plus. This is a plus. So this is 38. And you're like, miss, that's still not very helpful. Sure it is. Divide by 8. And yes, you are going to get a decimal on this one. And yes, that is okay. 38 divided by 8 is 4.75. So I'm sorry I didn't give you more room to write on that. It's my bad. Ask your teacher for a sticky note or something if you want one. All right, those are mid-segments. So there's really only two types. Either um, the sides are not the same or the sides are the same. So just pick the right one and work it accordingly. So the last thing we're talking about is altitudes. These are pretty straightforward, but it is a special line in a triangle. You've seen altitudes before. They're also called the height of the triangle, all right? So specifically, a altitude comes from a vertex and is perpendicular to the other side. So I'm actually going to use three colors right here to show you all those ways. So let's say that B, B is a vertex. So remember, this is a vertex. This is the altitude, and it is connecting with this side at 90 degrees. This side, AC, would be considered the base, right? So this is the altitude, and that would be considered the base. But truthfully, every triangle could have three different versions. So let's say I started at C. Well, C has its own altitude, and it meets here. Well, in that case, this would be the base, and that would be the altitude. And lastly, we could come from A, which is what you'll probably see most often. It meets here, and this would be considered the base. All right? So altitudes are just another way to say height. There are three ways we could have an altitude. We could have it inside the triangle, we could have it on the triangle or outside the triangle. So let's see what that looks like. Inside would typically come from the top. It could come from the corner. It's fine, kind of like it does over here. But typically you'll see it drawn as a dotted line with a 90 degrees, okay? So we would call this the altitude or the height. And then, this down here is called the base. The other way is if the altitude is actually on the triangle because the triangle is a 90 degree or a right triangle already. If that's the case, then this is the altitude and this is the base. And then sometimes when you have an uh, obtuse triangle, they'll draw it out here and you'll have a 90 degrees here. So this is the altitude, but this is the base. Okay, so why do we care? We use this particular line when we are trying to find the area of triangles. So we're just gonna do two quick examples of this, and then we're gonna let you kind of practice. So remember we did mid-segments, and now we're gonna do altitudes. So in this case, find the missing measurement round to the nearest tenth. All right, to the nearest tenth. So we're going to have decimals. That's okay. And they're trying to get us to find this piece. Interesting. I observed that they already gave me the answer of the area. So clearly I'm not trying to find the area. I know the area. I'm trying to find the missing side. So let's kind of draw it. It looks like this one, correct, because it's outside. So this right here would be considered our altitude or our height. So then what did we call this down here? This is called the base, 
Why is that important? Well, the formula for a triangle is area equals base times height divided by 2. So I need a base and I need a height. I already know the area. So this is how this becomes a little bit more high school math, a little less middle school math. I don't know my base, so I'm going to call it x. I do know my height. It is 15.3. And the formula says that I divide by 2. All right. The rest of this, guys, is pretty much calculator work. We are going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of my denominator. So 93.3 times 2 is 186.6. So I still have x times 15.3. Then I'm going to divide by 15.3. And my x or my base is 12.19. Now it told us to round to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be 12.2. Yeah, not so bad, huh? Not so bad. We have one example left and then uh, you're done. This is again finding the missing measurement. And we're going to round to the nearest tenth. Here's my altitude. Here is my base. In this case, I don't know the altitude. And again, they already gave me the area. Here's our formula. If you don't have it memorized, now you need to get it memorized. My area is 5. My base is 3.6. My height or my altitude, I do not know what that is. And the formula says I should divide by 2. So in order to solve, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to cancel out this divide by 2. Because the opposite of divide is multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. And I still have 3.6 times x. Divide by 3.6. Use your calculator, y'all. Use your calculator. And we're going to get 2.77777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777777